But I promise you, God will visit you. There is a divine visitation going on right now. Amen. God has visited me. Hallelujah. He has visited me several times in different occasions for different purposes. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's a good time to be here with you again in this program. This is the moment of change, the platform where God is changing life for the best. You're welcome. I bring you a good news today that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. He is the Savior of the world. My topic this hour is God's divine visitation. God's divine visitation. Something divine is something orchestrated in the spiritual realm. When people be in problem right from time, from the onset, in the Bible, God always find a way to visit them and deliver them out of their troubles. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for this program. As we commence, let every lives, oh God, that are watching and listening, our life be transformed for the best. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You welcome once again. Our text is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 to 3. Amen. Verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah. Remember our topic says God's divine visitation. God is going to visit you divinely because he doesn't use your matter to play. When you as a child of God always focus on God and believe that he can do everything for you. He will visit you. Just believe it. He has been visiting people. And the Bible says here where we have just read, he said, and God visited Sarah he meant as he has promised, which means Sarah has been praying. Sarah has been praying. I don't know what you'll be praying for. For several things for God to do for you. There is going to be God's divine visitation for you and your family. Your heart so shall experience a new turnaround for divine favor, for blessings. You go to soar high and you cannot be beneath. You are the head and not the tail. If you hear me say amen. Verse 2. He said, For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God has spoken to him. You know, you might have thought that time is elapsing. Time is going. There is no more time. My miracle has not come. This is your time. You're going to be experiencing you know, a dramatic turn around in your life. Miracle is going to come. What you have been praying for, Sarah did not sleep. Sarah kept telling God, I need this thing. I believe in God for children. And Abraham put it in the sight of God. Is it Eliezer? You want to hear it? They want to hear it, my property? They want to continue as a herd? And God said, not Eliezer. Your son you shall bear. At the old age, I'm going to give you a son. And the Bible says, that Sarah conceived. Hallelujah. And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. Hallelujah. People might have mocked you. They might have laughed at you. You mean your, your miracle you are expecting may not be to give it to, to children or to a child. It may be other things. It may be on a higher course. It may be on a business. It may be to grow in the Christian faith. It seems as if you fall today, you rise tomorrow, you fall yesterday, you rise today, and you fall in a rising. But I'm telling you, the Bible says for Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24, it says, For the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. In other words, the desires of the righteous shall be granted. Your desire, your petition with God, and God is going to supply it. 
The Bible says, book of Philippians 4, verse 19. Say, for the Lord our God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My topic this is God's divine visitation. I see God visiting you in your spiritual life, concerning your life, concerning the troubles you are going through. Your head, you may be having head challenges and God is going to visit you. You may be having, you know, the problem in, in your life, you believe in God for miracles, financial breakthrough. You want to have a good job. You want to do something. You want to travel to somewhere to go and do business. You you you, you want to grow in your Christian faith and your faith academy. Same as if there's a drawback. But I promise you, God will visit you. There's a divine visitation going on right now. Amen. God has visited me. Hallelujah. He has visited me several times in different occasions for different purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic is man. God's divine visitation. He is he, here now. Just put your hand and begin to, begin to receive it. I pray today by the God of Abraham, the, 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 the Trinity of prayer, God of Abraham, God of you know Isaac and Jacob, He's going to visit you. You may be in the noon, He visits you. You may be in the night right now, He visits you. You may be in the morning, God is going to visit you. Hallelujah. He's going to visit you. He has done it for me. He will do it for you. And I am still believing God for breakthrough for several things. And I'm pumped up tonight by the Spirit to challenge you and tell you that God is going to visit you as he has promised. Verse 3. You know, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah, you know, bare to him as Isaac. And Abraham called his son Isaac. Begin to name your miracle before he arrives. Hallelujah. Before your miracle comes, begin to name it. Abraham named his own son here Isaac. That, that Sarah gave birth to him gave, you know, at his old age. Sarah gave birth to, to, you know, to, to Isaac as at the age of 90 years. You know, 90 years. And Abraham was 100 years old. If you read verse 5, he talks about the years of Abraham. He said that Abraham was 100 years old when Sarah gave birth to his first child, you know, for her first child for Abraham. You know, your age might have been going, but God will meet you at the point of your very need, as he has said. Amen. There was a time in my life I was troubled, you know, in my revelations in dreams. You know, I, was, I saw myself in a vision, in a dream. And as soon as if the people were oppressing me and trying to kill me in their dream, in the revelation, suddenly I saw a big hand, a big half hand of God. A big half hand came from this place during the time of the, the old days when the hand appeared on the wall. And those days of Bethesda. And hand appeared on the wall and said, Mene, Mene, Teke. That same finger that appeared, he came with half finger. God came in my revelation. And the people were oppressing me, trying to kill me my dream. And God came with half hand, with half palm like this, and came from here in the half finger. Hallelujah. Half palm. He came and he, he, he just took me. I was very small inside the palm. I was small. I saw myself in the palm. And he took me and took me to, to another different place entirely. And I woke up in the dream. Again, I woke up inside the dream again. I woke up inside that dream and I woke up in the natural again, which means it was a very far div div divine visitation that God came to rescue me. I would have been a dead man by now. He came with a big with a big palm and took me, I was small, and took me in his palm and placed me in a different direction. I woke up from that dream and I woke up again from the dream inside it. Oh, it was a mystery. There is going to be a God's div divine visitation for your family, for your life. Amen. The God is going to visit your family. See, my there are problems here and there. See, my there are problems from the side of your husband, problem in the side of your children, problem in the side of your wife. God is going to bring visitation. I mean, He will visit you. You are very yourself. He will visit you. He will visit your household. He will visit your family. They might be talking, you know, making jest of you. 
and mocking you is going to be a celebration. They are going to celebrate you. As they are spreading your name for mockery, it's going to be a, a, a turn around. He said, what about the man you told me before? That one told me before. That names have become a celebrated name. Your names have become a celebrated name because God has done a turn around. My top is to remain God's divine visitation. You know, if you read the book of Daniel chapter 3, from verse 23 to verse 27, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar now saw that he placed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego on a furnace of fire to die because they said they were not going to bow to the gods of Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. And so he arrested them and put them in the furnace of fire. And the Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar said, Did we not put three men in that furnace of fire? But how beat, how come there come another fourth man walking at the son of man? Hallelujah. That was a fourth man. <laughs> I mean, that's God's visitation. That was a fourth man. This is, you need a fourth man in your life in a fourth dimension. <laughs> in the fourth dimension. Three dimension, the world see things, but in the sight of God, it, when you are spiritual, you begin to see things in the fourth dimension. Amen. So God came in a fourth man and delivered Shizrap. Meshach and Abednego from the furnace of fire. And fire did not hurt them. But the people that placed them there, they were burned down with fire. There is going to be a divine visitation in your business, in your marriage, in your family, in your school, in your children's life, in your nephew life, in your in-law life. Everyone surrounding you, God will visit you and people will celebrate with you. Hallelujah. I said, people are going to celebrate with you. They are going to congratulate you. Only congratulations shall be your name when God visits you. And God visited, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he became the fourth man in the fire. <laughs> he brought air condition. <laughs> you know, when God appeared, it's something divine, which is spiritual. Okay, okay, straight from the spiritual level. And I see you, God, visiting you. And I see you, God, visiting you. And I see you, God, visiting you. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, put your hand on your screen, on your TV set, and begin to, you know, as I begin to pray with you, that same hand, as you stretch it, can never turn back to you, voice. If it accomplished that which God has promised to do in your life, I see God's hand touching you. That same hand that sent me in my vision, in my dream, is here tonight. In that same hand that wrote on the wall and won the people, is here tonight. Amen. Listen, when God visits us, when God visits any nation, when His power is moving in any place, He brings no, he bro, he, he, he bring two things. Amen. He brings Causes and they bring blessing. I want you to tap on blessing. Proverbs 10, verse 22. He said, The blessing of the Lord God make it riches. He added no sorrow. So, what am I saying tonight? God is going to bring visitation. He is going to He's going to just come and deliver you from that your problem. He cast a God. That pain is gone. That disease is gone. That strife is gone. That calamity is gone. That problem in your office is gone. That problem in your marriage is gone. That problem in your head is gone. Problem in your body is gone. I see healing power flowing into your life. In your cavasa, in your medulla oblongata, in your cavasa vertebra, in your aorta, in your arteries. I see healing power moving right now in the name of Jesus Christ Nazareth, receive yours in the name of Jesus Christ ladies and gentlemen my topic is man God's divine visitation and God visited Sarah Sarah they used to laugh and and, and, and they mock her amen and Sarah had that son and God blessed, and God blessed, and God blessed the family. The Bible, the book of First Samuel chapter 2, and around verse 21, he said, And God visited Anna, and God visited Anna, God will visit you. Anna, they were laughing at, they do laugh at Anna, you know, our, our maids laugh at us, scorn. But Anna, the Bible says that God visited Anna, God is going to visit visit you. God is going to visit you. He's coming right now. He's moving right now. Remember I said when God visits the nation, He brings blessing and causes. Tap into the blessing of God. Tap into the blessing of God. I say tap into the blessing of God. I, I, I feel great tonight. 
I say, I feel great for you because God is moving to another level. The Bible was Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It said, God said, it said, for the thought I have towards you, they are thought of good and not of evil. In other words, the plan I have for you is not a disgrace plan. It's not a kabuye plan. It's a plan of success. It's a plan of victory. It's a plan of greatness. That is a plan God has for you. It's not a small plan. My topic says, God's divine visitation. The, let's take one more scripture. The Bible is the book of Exodus chapter 2. Amen. From verse 23 to verse 25. Exodus 2. The Bible said that the children of Israel sigh and cry unto God for the reason of their affliction in the hands of Egyptians. They sigh and cry to God. The Bible said, and God visited them. That same God will visit you tonight. The Lord visited the children of Israel. Amen. When they cried for the reason of their affliction by the Egyptian, God decided to visit them and gave them a prophet Moses to go fight their battles, to go deliver them from their slavery in Egypt. God visited them. God will visit you. I pray today that every nation that are in jeopardy, that are in serious problem, amen, God will bring visitation upon our nation, Nigeria, that is in problem, insecurity. Daily they are killing innocent so over there. God will visit Nigeria. I don't know how he's going to do it. He has his own style of doing things. Amen. In the Guinea, Conakry, we have a... We had that, that very military man, amen, Dan Boye, he, he went there to overthrow. That was God's way to deliver those people. And God will cause a change in Nigeria system so that they can have deliverance, so that they can have settled mind. Because God is listening to the sigh and the cry and the affliction of the children of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic is amen, God's divine visitation. Amen. The Bible says, Book of Acts, chapter 16. In verse 25 and 26, Paul and Silas, as they did the work of God, the Bible says that Paul and Silas, they prayed and they, and they, and they worshipped God. They prayed unto God from the prison. They cried to God. They prayed and they sang praises in the prison yard. They were suffering. They were arrested and locked up in prison. Not because they sinned against God, but because they preached the good news. And they, they arrested they arrested Paul and Silas and placed them in prison. But they did not stop there. The Bible said that Paul and Silas began to praise God, began to pray and began to praise God. They pray, they praise. They pray, they praise. Listen, and gentlemen. Turn your worries to praise and praise and prayer. They prayed, they praised God. They praised God, they prayed. And the Bible said that there was a shaking. <laughs> Listen, there's going to be a shaking in your bones. And there's going to be a shaking in your family. Where God is going to turn this around for cause divine favor has come upon your way today. I say it has come upon your way today. There's going to be God's divine visitation. Amen. The Bible is the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says that God chose Abraham and called him. He visited him. And he said, Abraham, come. I'm going to bless you. Whosoever bless you is blessed. Whosoever cursed you is cursed. It's two things, blessing and curses. And Abraham was blessed. God rejected curses from him. Remember, Judah Iscariot died as a cursed man. He died as a cosma. King Saul died as a cosma. He chose to collect curses. He died as a cosma. Amen. Ananias and Sapphira died as, as being cursed. They died on a curse. There, are, there were several people in the Bible that died in the curses. But there is a time for you today. Choose life and not curses. Choose blessing and not death. I say choose blessings. There's going to be God's visitation in your family. It's going to be God's visitation in your life tonight. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, book of Genesis chapter 13, from verse 1 to 4, that God blessed Abraham with silver and gold. He became worthy. The Bible said, God blessed Solomon too. He gave him wisdom. Harapatamata. He gave him wisdom and understanding to begin to follow God. Because God visited Solomon. And God will visit you. That same God will visit you. Amen. If you hear me, say amen. 
the Bible, see book of John chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says that God, Jesus Christ was preaching. He said, God has committed every form of judgment to my hand, to him. He said, the judgment of God, God has told time to judge. He said, Jesus Christ is the one that will not judge. So how is your life living? How is your life living? It is those that walk in the fear of God that God would visit the valley to change this around for their good. If you cry to God right now from your sin, because all judgment have been put in the hand of God. Whether Muslim, whether Hindus, no matter the relation you belong, the Jews, the, the Muslim, the, so the, the different tribes and different tongues and different tribes and different religions, Jesus Christ is the one that's going to judge them. He said, for God has committed all judgment to my able hands. And that is it. God will judge every, Jesus Christ will judge every religion. He will judge you and I. So no one shall escape. Bible says, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. He said, how shall we escape such a great condemnation if we neglect so great a salvation? So if you neglect my salvation tonight, that God will visit you, not to kill you, but to turn this around for you, to make you to repent. He said, when you hear his word, don't add in your heart. God wants to change your life. He wants to change your situation so that you can serve Him better. He wants to visit you. I don't know, you'll be walking in sin. You'll be walking in fornication life. You don't know how to get out of it. God is going to visit you divinely. That the fornication life is going to stop. That your adultery life is going to stop. God will visit your family. God will turn your life around. You'll be stealing. Anywhere you go, you will steal something and you are a Christian. God will visit you to turn your life around. You are a fornicator. God will visit you to turn this around. You lie a lot. God is going to visit you because the Bible's salvation is that all liars are going to hell. And sometimes you do different things, havoc. You, you forge certificates, you do different ad hoc things in order to get your way through. God wants to visit you. There's no need for that. God wants to visit you to change your life around. There's got to be a God visitation to correct those things in your life because you, you, you get what you need. God supply, no need to force certificates. No need to do that. Because God he visits you for prosperity, for favor. For divine breakthrough. That's why he comes. He wants to save you. Doesn't want anything to, to betray you out of eternal life. He wants to be saved with our spot of Rico. My topic remain God's divine visitation. Peter was visited in the prison. Whereby they locked him in the prison and the angel of God went to the prison and opened the gate, told Peter, put on your sandals, and God you know he led Peter out of the prison. And Peter was surprised, Am I dreaming? He said, You are not dreaming. And yeah, God vanished from him and he, he, he found himself outside. He was saved. God brought his visitation to him. God, I don't know the prison you are. God is going to set you free and visit you tonight. I say, God will visit you tonight in your family. In every, in every predicament you are right now. Wherever you are waiting me from. I see God visitation coming your way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Because we are visited every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, because your hand is upon us. Your hand is here tonight. Your hand is here tonight to set us from every predicament and problem. For you to for you to attract God's decision, number one, expectation. Number two, desire. Desire God. Proverbs 10 24, he said, The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. If you are a righteous person, you are expecting God's visitation, he be expecting him anytime. Be expecting him. Expect him. What you expect, you see. Number two, you, you must desire to see God. You may desire it, you shall have it. That's my message for you that God's visitation will come upon your life now. Amen. Father, thank you for the thing where your visitation has come. We we'll receive it tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go and celebrate. God has visited you. Amen.